But now in a private chair I've seen the world through a bitter stare But my dream is still alive I'm gonna be Fala galera, bem-vindos a mais um episódio de Sonoridades, hoje um episódio internacional, a gente tem como convidado o Geoff Tate, que é do Chris Reich, vai contar todos os detalhes dessa turnê em que ele celebra 30 anos aí do Empire, toca o Rage for Order, ele conta um pouquinho do porquê toca o Rage for Order, o que ele pretende com essa turnê, conta um pouquinho de detalhes de algumas músicas, de gravações, uh, foi que tudo muito rápido porque ele estava aqui no Brasil, no Rio de Janeiro, tá, foi no dia que ele foi fazer a apresentação intimista, vocês vão gostar. Curta, compartilhe, em breve tem mais episódios, assistam a gente, compartilhe com seus amigos, dê seu like e dê sua sugestão. Jeff, muito obrigado pela entrevista, sei que você está na correria da tour. Uh, quais são suas expectativas para estar tá tocando aqui no Brasil, tanto Rage for Order quanto Empire na íntegra? I'm very excited about playing both the albums, Rage for Order and Empire. Empire, of course, uh, we started with the 30-year anniversary of the album, and of course the pandemic kind of postponed everything. And the reason why I'm playing Rage for Order is simply because I want to. I love the album and I never got a chance to play all the songs on it uh, when the album came out, so this is my chance to uh, perform it. The band that I'm bringing with me to Brazil to present these two albums uh, are the same musicians I've been playing with for the last four years. Um, Jack Ross on bass guitar, uh, Kieran Robertson on guitar, uh, Alex Hart on guitar, and uh, Danny Laverde on drums. Fantastic young band, very exciting to watch, and uh, precision players. E, Geoff, é, os temas dos discos ainda são bastante atuais, né? Queria que você contasse um pouquinho sobre eles. I think that the themes uh, discussed lyrically on Rage for Order and Empire are classic themes, classic human questions that uh, stand up over time. Um, they describe the human condition as I see it in the 20th century, in the 21st century, and I, I'm not sure we change that quickly. And so perhaps those themes are still very relevant. E 
você lembra como foram as gravações do Rage for Order, do Empire, como é que foi essa transição de tecnologias e de temáticas? During the recording of Rage for Order, I was consumed with learning about technology. Uh, technology was, especially in the recording industry, was going through major shifts at that point. Uh, computers were being um, uh, utilized for the first time and uh, a lot of my uh, computer experience uh, began at that point. And because of what I was working with, the instruments I was working with, it was uh, making me think about technology's impact on mankind and, and what, what that would mean for us in the future. And so some of the songs uh, delve into um, how technology can affect uh, humankind. Songs like Screaming at Digital, for example. And the beat of your pulse, the computer world may flesh. We are one, you and I, we are versions of the same. You can see what I feel, don't turn your back on me. Oh, I fly that your dreams are only program cards. By the time Empire came out, that was several years later, and uh, I was really interested in um, social issues around the world. I had done quite a bit of traveling at that time and had experienced a lot of different cultures and uh, seen uh, similarities uh, with uh, economic and political impact on, on civilizations. And um, uh, a lot of that came out in the writing uh, for the Empire album, songs like uh, Della Brown, for example, really explored the topic of homelessness. Father, me, could you spare some change? Silent lucidity was something sort of different with uh, really in basic terms, it's about trying to explain to your child uh, what dreams are, which uh, as an adult seems very simple, but trying to explain it to a child is uh, quite challenging. Relax child, you were there, but only did it realize that you were scared. A gente está vivendo numa época em que as pessoas estão buscando vintage, vinil, cassete, e ao mesmo tempo do boom do streaming. Que, 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 qual o paralelo que você faz disso? I think we live in the digital age now, and we uh, have really embraced that as a, a worldwide community. Uh, we'll never go back. 
to cassette tapes and, and vinyl, although romantic, uh, they're very impractical. Streaming is uh, instantaneous and um, it's what people have adapted to and it makes perfect sense. It's a very logical medium. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's ever going to go back to, to where it was. E o que você pode falar dos seus projetos, né? Você gravou vários discos com a Vantes, e o que você pode dizer aí sobre essas, essas escolhas de projetos que você teve? A Vantes, inclusive, foi um, é um baita projeto com o Tobias Summit, né? Uma rock opera. Como é que você enxerga isso? I have been doing quite a lot of projects now. Um, I like to busy myself with uh, things I'm interested in. I've done three album projects with uh, Tobias Samet's Aventasia project and a world tour. Uh, that was really quite uh, fun. And uh, I love working with, with uh, Tobias. He's very creative. And, uh, and we have a good time uh, making music together. <laughs> project that I started a couple years ago called Sweet Oblivion. I've done two records with them and beginning to work on the third one. I have my own record, which I hope to have out uh, by the end of 2023. Um, and I have a, a wonderful travel uh, company called Backstage Pass Travel, uh, where I take people on uh, travel trips around the world and they accompany uh, myself and the band on the road. Uh, for uh, holidays in places like Italy, uh, Germany, Ireland, Scotland, the United States. And uh, it's very, very fun. It's a week long travel trip. Se você tivesse que resumir tua carreira em uma música ou um disco, quais seriam e por quê? If I had to encapsulate my, my career in one song, I absolutely couldn't do it. It's impossible. If I had to encapsulate my entire career in one album, very difficult, but I would say it's my next record, which I'm releasing this year. Se você tivesse que regravar algum disco ou mudar alguma coisa em algum álbum, qual seria esse disco? O que você mudaria? O que você regravaria? Conta pra gente. If I had a chance to re-record any album, uh, I don't think I would do it. I'm really happy with. Uh, well, I would. I would. I would remix, not re-record, but I would remix the Warning album because. Um, we never got to mix that as a band. It was taken out of our hands by the record company at the time and given to somebody else who didn't care about it as much as we did. And it's always been sort of a, a thing where we wish it could have sounded like we had envisioned it. So that would probably be the only thing I would change. Para encerrar o papo aqui, o que o Joff de hoje diria para o Joff 
os anos 80 que estava começando e o que o Geoff que está começando a falar para o Geoff de hoje. I think what you mean with the last question is what advice I would give to a young singer. Um, I would say take care of yourself physically. I would say mm, work with as many projects and uh, musicians as you possibly can in your life. Get a, a very extensive background in music. And I would say take some business classes and learn about money and how to handle things financially. And secondly, never ever under any circumstances get a second day job.
watching out for you, watching over you.